Welcome to Envira Stories. This lesson is called Mind Mapping Your Story Ideas. Hi, my name is Kelly Coleman and I hope this provides you with a little bit of help when writing your Envira story. Okay, mind mapping is a process where you get your, all your ideas out of your head and down onto paper. So to start with, we have our title. Now the example I'm providing with you today is called Sam and His Eggs. So the title is the center of our story mapping. And we're using mind clouds. That's what I like to call them anyway. So the next one is our characters. At the beginning of a story we always like to try to describe who our characters are going to be. So the reader knows exactly who's involved. So in here we write down our main characters and our minor characters. In this example, Sam is our main character. He's a dog. He's a very young dog, only nine months old. He's also a Border Collie Cross Kelpie. So if you know what that type of dog is, it's very, very active and energetic farm dog. So of course he loves to round up animals and he also loves fresh eggs. Now some of our minor characters who we've met, who we mention is Peter, who is his owner, Big Red, who's one of the hens in the chook house, and Chewy, the older, wiser dog. Now with our characters, make sure to include as many characters as you think you might use in your story. You might not use them, but as long as you've got your ideas down on paper, you'll always be safe and you won't forget anything. Our next mind cloud is describing where and when our story is going to take place. So in this example, we're in Peter's backyard. Now he lives on a small farm, but his backyard is where his chooks are and where his dogs hang out. So his chooks are free range, so they fossick around the backyard, eating all the bugs and turning up some of the garden. And the dogs are there to protect them from foxes and cats and other nasty things that might like to eat them. And the when of our story is early springtime, when the chooks are all starting to lay their eggs. Our next mind cloud is when something happens. This could be catastrophic problem that happens. It could just be a minor development in the story. But it's how we develop our story and what that story is going to entail. So we've described that Sam is a dog. He lives in the backyard with the chickens. Now the problem is that Peter keeps wondering why there are no eggs to collect in the morning. And you know, Big Red is clucking very loudly trying to attract Peter's attention to say, come here, come here, come see what's happening. But Peter doesn't speak chicken. And then finally, Peter catches Sam eating a fresh egg on the lawn. And he's looking very, very guilty because he knows he's done something wrong. And then we have our ending. It's our last mind cloud. Now this is what we call so a resolution. So we've got a result of our problem. It's also what we call our happy ending. So in this example, Peter finds it really, really funny that Sam is eating the eggs. At least it's not a snake or rats. So the problem is though, he has to try and work out what he's going to do. He can't tell Sam off. He didn't catch him in the hen house. He caught him after the fact eating the egg. So what he decides to do is to build a new door that lets the chook out, chooks out, but the dogs aren't allowed to get in. And our happy ending is that the dogs and the chickens are living happily together in the backyard as they should. So the best thing about this story is it has been written from personal experience. Sam is actually our dog. Peter actually did catch Sam with an egg in the backyard. And there's Sam and there's Big Red, one of our chickens. So if you write from personal experience or write from something you've heard happen from a friend or a family member, it makes the story so much more believable. We still have to do research. You still have to find out details about your characters that you're 
you're choosing or about your subject matter. It might be a threatened species. Why is it under threat? And write down some of the problems and how to resolve it. But always include an element in your story that comes from experience because this means that it gives everybody a better idea of your story and makes it so much more believable. So I hope this has provided you with a little bit of advice and a bit of help in getting your ideas down on paper so you can create a great Enviro story. Thank you very much and look forward to seeing your story in our next competition.